As you are aware, as a pest management professional, bedbugs have made a remarkable comeback since the 21st century after more than 50 years of not being a threat. The purpose of this series of videos is to provide you with an excellent knowledge overview of this pest and its control. You will also be able to use portions of the video as resources for your clients and or facility managers in rental units, university residences, and other sites where bedbugs may become established. Bedbug infestations occur worldwide and the association of bedbugs and people dates back to the beginning of recorded history. They were a common pest in England from the 17th century until the late 1940s, and they had also become a common problem in North America by the mid-1800s, largely through immigration and international trade. As central heating became common in buildings by the early 1900s, bedbug infestations became more common and an estimated one-third of dwellings in major cities in Europe had become infested. Most common areas where there was a high turnover of people such as overcrowded neighborhoods, hotels, restaurants, furniture shops, and laundries were prime for infestation and helped fuel the major influx of bedbugs throughout communities during that time. Different chemicals such as sulfur, mercury, arsenic, and pyrethrum were used to control the bedbug epidemic in the 1800s and 1900s. None of the methods proved to be effective at eliminating the bugs. Fumigation of infested structures using sulfur and later hydrogen cyanide gases proved to be more effective compared to the previously used insecticides. Despite their effectiveness in killing the insects, these products carried considerable health risks for those using it and for those who were in proximity to it. In the 1940s, DDT became available as a much safer and more effective product and was able to eliminate bedbugs in a room by thoroughly treating only the bed. Thus, wide use of DDT in the 40s and 50s dramatically reduced bedbug infestations in most industrialized countries. By the 1950s, bedbugs had developed widespread resistance to DDT, but another class of insecticides that appeared on the market, the organophosphates, proved to be an effective replacement. During this time, the use of DDT and organophosphate insecticides resulted in the practical eradication of bedbugs in the United States and other developed countries. In fact, bedbugs were no longer considered a common pest in homes or other sites for nearly five decades. By the late 20th century, bedbugs began showing up again more and more frequently in hotels near major metropolitan cities, as well as in homeless shelters and low-income housing. Possible reasons for this resurgence include lack of highly effective, long-lasting residual insecticides. The organochlorine insecticides and most of the organophosphates were no longer permitted for indoor use in the U.S. due to safety concerns. The way pesticides were applied in homes was restricted by regulations. And increased frequency and volume of travel. Bedbugs belong to the family Simicidae, which includes 92 described species. Two species, the common bedbug and the tropical bedbug, use humans as their primary host. The common bedbug, Cymex lectularius, has been found in all 50 states of the United States, while the tropical bedbug, Cymex hemipterus, has only been found in the states of Florida and Hawaii. Bedbugs are flattened, wingless insects that cannot fly or jump and feed only on blood. They are straw-colored at the youngest stage, reddish-brown at the adult stage, and their bodies are covered with short, golden hairs. Before feeding, the adults are about the size of an apple seed and are very flat, while the juvenile stages can be as small as a pinhead. After feeding, they become swollen and change to dark red in color and have been described as animated blood drops. Their eggs, which are commonly found in clusters, are white and shaped like a grain of rice and are about half the size of a pinhead. Newly hatched bedbugs are nearly colorless but otherwise resemble the adults. The insect can breed all year round when a host is present and typically have three to six generations per year in the northeastern United States. The average lifespan of the bedbug can range from a few months to a little over a year during this time. A female bedbug can lay up to 200 eggs depending on the temperature and the amount of food available. As they grow, bedbugs need to consume at least one blood meal before each molt and will shed their skins five times before turning into adults. Bedbugs feed only on blood but can readily survive without feeding for two to three months at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. However, bedbugs may live much longer at lower temperatures. 
Bed bugs excrete liquid fecal materials soon after feeding, which range from white to yellow, reddish brown, or dark brown to black in color. These spots are telltale signs of bed bug infestations. Bed bugs prefer to live close to their food source in areas where they are not likely to be seen or disturbed and are usually distributed on or around beds or sofas where people spend long periods of time. They also prefer to live in cracks or crevices or long edges that offer protection. Another important fact to take note of is that bed bugs have clawed feet, which makes it difficult for them to crawl on some smooth, hard surfaces, such as metal, glass, and plastic. Therefore, they tend to walk on surfaces of texture that will enable them to get around easier. They find a host by following the concentration of carbon dioxide, which is the strongest attractant for the insect, and heat produced by the host. Bed bugs are not known to transmit any diseases between humans or other animals, but their bites can cause a wide range of symptoms. Reactions may include itchiness, welts, rashes, and in some cases, bullous pustules. Severe reactions may cause pain, dizziness, and sweating. Scratching the bite sites may also cause secondary infections, and in many cases, even the idea of being bitten can cause people mental anguish. It is also not uncommon for people to experience difficulty sleeping, suffering from stress or anxiety, or social isolation. Sometimes, people will not develop any bite symptoms until they have been bitten repeatedly, while others, especially the elderly, never develop bite symptoms at all. Bed bugs are spread to new locations primarily by human activities. For example, someone bringing in infested furniture into a home is a common way of spreading the insect from one location to another. Travelers may also bring bed bugs to a new place with their infested luggage, or they can pick up insects when staying at an infested hotel, hostel, or with friends and relatives. The bugs can also easily be spread throughout public places, in common areas, workplaces, schools, and other public locations. In multi-occupancy settings, like apartments, dormitories, or hotels, bedbugs may simply walk to adjoining rooms through hallways and other structural pathways. The higher the population density of bedbugs in a unit, the more likely they will disperse into hallways in neighboring areas. Therefore, it is often a good idea to inspect the adjoining units in a multi-unit dwelling once an infestation is reported. When working in an infested location, the following practices are recommended. Don't place any items on or near beds or upholstered furniture. Avoid sitting, leaning, or brushing against beds and upholstered furniture. Conduct a visual inspection of your clothing and belongings upon leaving the work area. If you find bed bugs on your clothing or work items, change into clean clothes and bag all of the items that you brought in and seal tightly. Bagged clothing can be laundered in hot water or placed in a dryer on a hot cycle for at least 20 minutes. Shoes or other small items that can't be laundered may be placed in a household freezer for a minimum of four days, or they can be put into a portable heat chamber for several hours following the manufacturer recommendations. Bedbug infestations are commonly identified by one or more of the following methods. Interviews with clients visual inspection, the use of bed bug monitors, canine scent detection. Interviewing people can provide valuable insight regarding the infestation history, possible sources of the bed bugs, and the extent of the infestation. Examples of interview questions are, do you feel bed bug bites or see evidence of bed bugs? When did you first notice bed bugs? Where do you sleep or sit most of the time in a day? Did you visit places with known bed bug infestations recently? While valuable information can be gained during an interview, it is not always reliable, so it is best to also conduct a visual inspection to confirm the presence or absence of bedbugs. Visual inspection is the most common method of inspection and is an effective and simple method for identifying moderate to well-established infestations. Detailed inspections can be conducted to gather information such as the distribution and severity of the infestation, challenges and obstacles that exist to treatment, Inspections should be conducted with two people in most cases due to the amount of lifting and moving of items that is often necessary for a thorough inspection. This will reduce the likelihood of personal injury, property damage, and disruption of bedbugs. If bedbugs are not found but their presence is still suspected, the installation of mattress and box spring encasements and bedbug monitors is advisable. 
A variety of bed bug monitors are available and are valuable tools to save labor cost and to improve the accuracy of detecting bed bugs. The use of bed bug sniffing dogs has become more common in recent years. This approach is less disruptive and more efficient than visual inspections and is especially useful for large-scale inspections such as entire apartment buildings, dormitories, or hotels. Although canine bed bug detection teams have the capability to identify low-level infestations, this method does have limitations depending largely on proper training and maintenance. A dog may not correctly signal an alert when bed bugs are present. Conversely, a dog may false alert meaning that the dog incorrectly signals the presence of bedbugs where no bedbugs are present. For this reason, the handler or other trained staff should confirm the presence of bedbugs in the areas where dogs have alerted. If bedbugs cannot be confirmed through a visual inspection, it will be necessary to make a decision regarding how the alert will be handled. One option is to record the area as suspect and continue to monitor and inspect the area in an effort to confirm the presence of bedbugs. It is essential for pest management professionals to have all of the necessary tools and materials for the treatment of a living space or other site. Visual inspection tools include a suitable flashlight, a Ziploc bag containing pre-labeled sample vials with alcohol, tweezers, a good magnifying glass, a multi-driver tool, a pen or marker, and a writing pad or electronic device to document necessary data. Tools for cleanup and physical control and exclusion of bedbugs may include a vacuum cleaner with fine attachment tip for getting into seams and cracks, a caulking gun, heavy-duty garbage bags for enclosing infested items, and a hot steam machine. The next set of materials is for installing encasements on beds. These tools include a measuring tape and felt pads for protecting the encasements at corners where they can be easily damaged. Insect interceptors are also very important and are a great help in detection after treatment and to ensure that infestation has been eliminated. Some of the typical chemical control tools and materials include an insecticide aerosol for treating cracks and crevices or flushing, a duster with an appropriate insecticidal dust, and a sprayer with premixed insecticide. Various easy-to-read education sheets are helpful for clients to understand and cooperate with the control effort. Without the client's cooperation and understanding, your job will become very difficult. It is important to protect yourself from exposure to both bed bugs and chemicals while conducting a treatment. So proper self-protection equipment such as gloves, goggles, long-sleeved shirt, long pants, and work boots should be used according to product label direction. Professionals should choose methods based on customer needs, the structure type, and level of infestation. Attention should also be paid to the type of occupants as well. Are small children or pregnant women present in the home? Does anyone in the home have asthma? These sort of factors may influence your decision to select certain treatment types over others. Professionals should analyze each situation and determine the type of preparation that is necessary. The goal of preparation is to expedite the treatment work and to not create new obstacles that will make control difficult. Generally, in lightly infested, non-cluttered rooms, it is best to not let clients prepare anything unless it is to provide access for pest control personnel. Resident preparation may disturb the bed bugs and cause the bed bugs to disperse into unpredictable areas, causing failure of your control efforts. Provide occupants with bed bug educational materials and a summary of what you'll be doing and why. If a particular closet or dresser is found to be infested, professionals should place infested items in heavy duty plastic bags and treat the area. Ask residents to declutter their living spaces to the best of their ability and to launder the infested washable items. In a heavily infested apartment, all items from the sleeping area should be washed, heat treated, or discarded. Washed clothing should be kept in sealed bags until the rest of the treatment is carried out and the bedbugs are eliminated from the room. The best approach for a bedbug control job is to use Integrated Pest Management, or IPM which is the most effective way to eliminate bedbugs and safeguard the clients and the environment. IPM is a sustainable approach to managing pests by combining biological, physical, and chemical tools in a way that minimizes economic, health, and environmental risks. Steps of a bedbug IPM program. Inspect to determine the bedbug species and infestation levels and conditions of the environment. Communicate with residents and clients about bedbugs and discuss the treatment plan. Implement treatment protocols. Inspect neighboring units in multi-unit dwelling. These include apartments upstairs and downstairs. Follow up with inspection and or intervention every two to three weeks until eradication is achieved.
Upon entering the home, place all equipment in an area that is not suspected to have bedbugs, such as out in the middle of the floor. The steamer should be plugged in at the onset so it has time to come up to temperature and pressure for use during the service. Start in the area that is suspected to be most infested. In this home, it is the bedroom. Start at the bed by inspecting the pillows. Check all seams and edges for evidence of bed bugs. If any bugs are encountered, they can be removed and any eggs can be steamed with the steamer if the fabric will allow exposure to heat. Bag any pillows that do not have pillowcases to allow for them to be treated by the tenant. Any pillows that have pillowcases, the outside of the encasement should be inspected along seams and edges for the presence of bed bugs. Any bugs can be removed with a vacuum. The pillowcases should be removed and placed in the center of the bed so that they can be bagged with the rest of the bedding. Pillows should be set aside. Next, inspect the bedding. Start with the sheets and comforter by inspecting any seams and edges where bugs may be hiding. Remove any bugs using the vacuum and begin to fold all of the bedding into the center of the bed so it can be bagged upon completion of the inspection. Next, move on to the bed cover and repeat the inspection process used for the comforter and sheets. Once all items are in the center of the bed, bag all bedding and set the bag aside until the end of the service. Inspect the entire 360 degree circumference of the top seams and edges of the mattress for any evidence of bed bugs or their eggs. If a sample needs to be retained for identification, place it in alcohol for proper identification once you return to the office. Continue by removing any bugs with a vacuum. Also, be sure to keep the tip of the vacuum at a 45 degree angle to be sure you are removing the bugs and not pushing them along the surface of the mattress. Remove the mattress from the bed with the assistance of another person if it is too heavy to lift with one person to avoid injury. Place the already inspected portion of the mattress against the wall. Inspect the remaining ribbing and seams of the mattress with the same protocol when the mattress was lying on the bed. Pay attention to any tags or labels as these are common areas that bugs may hide. You may also need to measure the length, width, and height of the mattress to be assured that you use the proper sized encasement. The same measurement techniques can be used for the box spring. Next, encase the mattress using the proper encasement. Be sure to completely close the encasement to be assured bugs cannot escape once closed. Inspect the bed skirt, if present, along the seams and edges and remove any bed bugs that are encountered. The bed skirt should be folded and placed in the bag of bedding from earlier that will be laundered by the tenant. Inspect the top seams of the box spring for any evidence of bed bugs. If bugs are found, use the removal protocol that was used for the top seams of the mattress. Inspect the underside of the box spring for any evidence of bed bugs. Be advised that this is the most likely area you will find them. Inspect the staple indentations where the dust cover is attached to the box spring, as well as under the plastic corner protectors, and any bugs encountered should be removed with the vacuum similarly to the protocol used for the mattress. Remove any loose staples and all plastic corner protectors as these will compromise the integrity of the encasement and create opportunities for the bugs to escape in the future. Encase the box spring with the appropriate box spring encasement using the measurements you acquired before. Be sure to close the encasement to assure that bugs cannot escape in the future. Now move on to the headboard if one is present. This is a common area that bed bugs hide and needs to be treated as thoroughly as possible. Bed bugs typically hide along seams and edges as well as in screw holes or other gaps, cracks, and crevices. Be sure not to forget about the underside of the headboard as well as where the bed frame attaches to the headboard. If any bugs are encountered, they can be removed using a vacuum or treated using the steamer shown before. All cracks and crevices should be treated with an appropriate crack and crevice material or liquid residual, being sure to limit the exposure to the person who may be sleeping in the bed. All cracks, crevices, screw holes, and the area around where the bed frame attaches to the headboard should also be treated. Both the front and back of the headboard should be treated similarly. Repeat this for the footboard as well. Be sure to check all labels on pesticides being used to make sure this application is appropriate. If no activity is observed, you can simply apply a liquid spray or other appropriate material where the bed bugs may be hiding, such as cracks and holes from nails or screws. Apply protective felt to any sharp edges along the bed frame to protect the box spring encasement from tearing. 
Although this will not 100% eliminate chances of tearing, it will drastically reduce rips and tears which may allow bed bugs to escape in the future. Install interception devices under the legs of the bed. If the leg of the bed is too large for the center well of the interception device, place the interception device next to the leg of the bed against the baseboard if possible. Now move on to the nightstands. First, remove any items from the top of the nightstand so that you can flip the nightstand over in the future. Remove the drawers. You can quickly inspect the outside of the drawers for the presence of bed bugs. If any are encountered, they can be removed with a vacuum, steam treated, or pesticides can be applied as needed. Set the drawers aside. With the drawers removed, inspect the inside framework of the nightstand for the presence of bed bugs. If any bugs are found, they can be removed with a vacuum and steam treated. Check all seams, edges, cracks, and crevices. Any cracks or crevices should then be treated with the appropriate material, and the general frame of the inside of where each drawer sits should be treated with the liquid residual. Next, flip the nightstand over and inspect the bottom and back of the nightstand for the presence of bed bugs. Check all screw holes, seams, and edges. If bugs are found, they can be removed with a vacuum and steam treated. Be careful along the back of the nightstand, as this is a common area to find bugs in the seams where the back attaches to the frame of the nightstand. Steam is probably the most appropriate treatment tool to address bugs in this area. Next, all cracks, crevices, and seams should be treated with the appropriate crack and crevice material and the liquid residual should be applied around the perimeter of the back of the nightstand and the bottom of the nightstand. Turn the nightstand back onto its feet and replace the drawers and items that were on top of the nightstand. Next, inspect the ottoman if one is present, paying attention to any seams or edges in the upholstery. This ottoman has buttons in the upholstery that are prime spots for bugs to hide. Any pockets in the upholstery should also be inspected and any evidence found should be steam treated as needed. Turn the ottoman over and inspect the bottom in the same fashion that you inspected the top. Remove any bugs encountered using a vacuum and steam treat as needed. Apply a liquid residual to the underside of the ottoman and use a crack and crevice material if needed in any cracks and crevices. If any upholstered furniture is present in the bedroom, inspect all seams and edges for the presence of bed bugs. Handle the pillows on the upholstered furniture with the same protocol that you used for the pillows found on the bed. Inspect all seams and edges along the front, sides, and back of the chair. If bed bugs or their eggs are found, steam is recommended to address these areas of concern. A vacuum can also be used to remove any bed bugs that are noted. Pesticides can be applied in the areas where limited contact would be made by a person sitting on this piece of furniture. Turn the chair over and inspect all staple indentations, cracks, crevices, and screw holes for the presence of bed bugs. You should address the area on the underside of the upholstered furniture using the same protocol as was used for the top of the chair. For a more thorough overview of how to handle and treat upholstered furniture, please review the living room section of this video. Curtains are also common places where bed bugs can hide. They should be thoroughly inspected and any bugs that are found can be removed with a vacuum. The curtain should be taken down and bagged similarly to the bedding and the resident should be informed to have them cleaned. The area around the window where the curtain was hanging should be treated. All wall hanging should be inspected for the presence of bed bugs. Anywhere the item touches the wall as well as the back of the picture are common places to find bed bugs hiding. Areas of evidence on the wall can be steam treated and it is recommended that any wall hanging showing evidence of bed bug infestation be taken off the wall and bagged for the tenant to address. The baseboard floor junction is also a common area for bed bugs to hide. This area should be treated with the appropriate dust and liquid residual pesticide. Dust can be easy to over apply as shown. Excess dust should be removed with a vacuum and dust should be applied so that a light dusting is evident upon closer inspection. Baseboard heaters can also harbor bed bugs and should be treated with an appropriate dust underneath where any conduits come from the wall or floor. All sockets and switch plates within two feet of the sleeping areas should be removed and the area around the electrical box should be treated with the appropriate dust. Cover should be replaced after the treatment is applied. If there is a large gap present between the baseboard and floor, this area could be sealed with caulk to help prevent future infestation. Please be advised that if caulk is applied and there are gaps in the caulk, the bugs will still be able to gain access to the baseboard and wall. These imperfections can be smoothed by running your finger along the caulk line. 
At this point, you should put the bed back in place. Seal any encasements and put together any furniture that has been disassembled. When placing the box spring back on the bed frame, be sure you place it down gently as to make sure you do not tear the encasement. Once the room is back in place, put the bag of bedding and other launderable items on top of the bed and put all information sheets in place that instruct the tenant how to appropriately handle each item, such as what to do with bagged items, information about interceptor devices under the legs of beds and furniture, as well as types of preparation or cooperation that will be required during future visits. Before leaving the bedroom, check the room for any other items that may be present that may be high risk for bed bug infestation. If any items are identified to have bed bugs present, such as this sleeping bag, bag the item in a plastic bag and place the appropriate instruction sheet on top of the bag so that the resident knows how to handle the bag upon their return. In the living room, couches are common areas of bed bug infestation as they are commonly used as sleeping areas. First start by inspecting all pillows and cushions for the presence of bed bugs. Check all seams, edges, and zipper areas for the presence of bed bugs and their eggs. If evidence is noted, the bugs can be removed with a vacuum and steam can be used to treat the areas of infestation. Once the cushions and pillows are inspected, they can be set aside. The framework of the couch should now be inspected. Any seam, fold, or pocket on the exterior of the couch should be inspected thoroughly. If bed bugs are found, they can be removed with a vacuum and the area steam treated. Pesticides can be considered on the couch, but should only be applied in the areas where the person sitting on the couch will make limited contact. The couch should now be turned over so it can be inspected. Any staple indentations, cracks, and crevices should be inspected for the presence of bed bugs and vacuum and steam treated as necessary. A liquid residual can be applied to the bottom of the couch, especially in the area of staple indentations and where the leg attaches to the frame of the couch. The couch can now be turned back over, put in its original place, and the cushions and pillows can be put back in place. For the next upholstered chair, the pillows and cushions should be inspected with the same protocol as used on the couch. Any seams, edges, and pockets within the fabric that are harboring bed bugs should be vacuumed and steam treated to address any live bugs or eggs that may be present. The steamer should be moved at approximately one inch per second to properly kill all bugs and eggs on contact. These folds or seams can be treated with the appropriate pesticide if the tenant makes limited contact with the area being treated. Treating these areas can not only address bed bugs that may be present, but can also prevent future infestations of the same seams, edges, and folds. The chair should now be turned over and all areas on the underside of the chair can be inspected similarly to the couch. The areas where the feet attach to the chair can be treated with the appropriate pesticide along with the staple seams where the dust cover attaches to the chair. A dust should also be applied to the inner framework of the chair by poking the duster tip through the dust cover and applying enough dust to get 100% coverage within the chair. Dust can also be applied between the legs and framework of the chair to hopefully prevent the bed bugs from gaining access in the future. The chair can now be put back where it was and interception devices installed under the legs of the chair and cushions and pillows put back in place. Any other furniture in the area of the living room should be inspected for the presence of bed bugs. In this instance, a dining room table is next to the chair we just treated. Each chair attached to the table should be inspected for the presence of bed bugs. All seams, edges, and screw holes should be inspected and treated appropriately if bed bugs are found. The underside of the table should also be inspected similarly to how the chairs were inspected. Closets should also be inspected in the living room. Both the outside and inside of the closet should be treated with the appropriate pesticides as bed bugs are commonly found inside of them. All cracks and crevices, baseboards, and any other area where the bed bugs may hide should be treated. If items were in the closet upon entry, they should be inspected and any items identified to be infested with bed bugs should be bagged and the tenant should be instructed how to address those items properly. Baseboard heating units should be treated with an appropriate dust to address any bed bugs that may be harboring within. A light dust application should be applied as demonstrated. Baseboards, closets, and door frames should be treated throughout the home with the appropriate liquid residual pesticide in an effort to address bugs that may move around the home. Bathrooms should be inspected in an effort to identify any areas of infestation. If bed bugs are identified, they can be removed with a vacuum 
steam treated if necessary, and the appropriate pesticides can be used in cracks, crevices, along baseboards, or under pieces of furniture. As the baseboards are being treated, evidence of bed bugs should be watched for in an effort to identify any odd areas of infestation that may exist. Lastly, all equipment should be collected and the appropriate paperwork should be completed for the service. All appropriate information sheets to instruct the resident what to do upon their return should be in place. All pesticide applications should be properly documented as well as any obstacles that were encountered during treatment and any future tasks the tenant or management will need to carry out for future treatments. Once the initial treatment has been completed, follow-up visits should be scheduled every two weeks until the infestation has been eliminated. During the follow-up service, review the client feedback form. If the client is present, conduct an interview regarding any ongoing or new findings of bedbug activity or bites. It is very important to pay attention to all areas where bedbugs were previously found or reported. Inspect all sleeping and resting areas again, carefully checking surfaces of encasements for activity, as well as making sure there are no rips or tears. Any areas with fecal materials and eggs from bedbugs should be steamed and vacuumed. Check the previously set insect interceptor traps and record the number and distribution of bedbugs in different rooms from all of these observation tools. First and second instar bedbugs are very difficult to see once they die in the monitor traps, as they are very small. In addition, other insects can also appear in the monitors. For this reason, using a handheld magnifying glass will help in correctly identifying if bedbugs are present. If bedbugs are still present during the follow-up service, additional treatments will be necessary. Remember, it is important that follow-up services continue every two weeks until the bedbugs have been eradicated. Rotating among different insecticide classes in the follow-up services is recommended. If only a few bed bugs are found, hand removal or applying an aerosol to infested areas following label instructions may be sufficient. Heat treatment may be an excellent alternative to conventional treatment in some cases. This type of treatment involves specialized equipment and a considerable time frame to perform, but when done properly, it is very effective and fast compared to conventional treatments. This may be the treatment of choice when immediate elimination is preferred, and the items cannot be effectively and safely treated by other methods. There are various types of heat treatment equipment available. Heat trucks or custom-made heat chambers may be used there is also the option for whole house heat treatment, which is more expensive, but can often eliminate bed bugs with only one service. After the treatment, mattresses and box springs should be encased and insect interceptors placed under bed and sofa legs to confirm the success of the treatment. If the heat treatment did not completely kill the bed bugs, additional treatments may be necessary. Heat treatments are not always 100% effective. Failures are most likely to occur in dwellings that are very cluttered or severely infested where bugs are entrenched in wall, floor, or ceiling voids. Whole structure heat treatment requires extensive preparation. Follow the equipment manufacturer's instructions on use of heating units to avoid property damages and to ensure all items are properly heated during treatment. This shows a heavily infested one-bedroom apartment that is occupied by a senior citizen. His apartment was reasonably clean, with little furniture, and he spent most of the daytime in his wheelchair. Hundreds of bedbugs were found on the bed. The extent of black stains on the box spring indicates the level of infestation was high. The resident did not complain about the bedbugs, and as a result, the apartment remained untreated for several months. Insect interceptors were placed under the bed legs and along walls in every room to monitor the bed bug numbers and distribution. This diagram shows the distribution of the monitors. Bed bugs were found in every one of the monitors after 15 days. The largest number of bed bugs was found in the monitor in the hallway across from the bathroom. Large numbers of bed bugs also were found in the entry door area. This case demonstrates that bed bug activity in an apartment is not limited just to the sleeping or resting areas. This apartment required multiple treatments in all rooms to eliminate the problem. This is a one-bedroom apartment in a high-rise apartment building occupied by a disabled man with limited financial resources who spends most of his time in a wheelchair during the day. Piles of clothing were on the floor of the bedroom. We observed several thousand bedbugs in the resident's bed and sofa, behind baseboards, on the wheelchair, as well as the toilet in the bathroom. University researchers treated his apartment with hot steam 
as well as spraying the hospital bed and baseboards. They inspected the unit on a bi-weekly basis for 10 weeks, and the unit was retreated using hot steam and insecticide application as before. The number of bed bugs observed during this inspection by week 10 was a total of six. This apartment represented one of the most challenging environments where resident cooperation is minimal and treatment options are limited due to the clutter and the hospital bed. This is a one-bedroom apartment in the same building as the previous case. The bed did not have frames, piles of dirty clothing were on the floor, and at least several thousand bed bugs were present. University researchers installed encasements and bed bug interceptors, treated the entire unit with steam, and dusted with diatomaceous earth. All the clothing was put into plastic bags, and steam treatment of the bed was repeated again after two weeks to kill bed bugs resting on the mattress covers. The resident did not wash his clothing. The mattress encasement became very dirty and had numerous bed bug fecal materials. The encasement was replaced at week 10 and the apartment became bed bug free at week 22 based on results from visual inspection and inspection of the insect interceptor. This case demonstrates that many visits may be needed to eliminate an infestation if the client is not cooperative. In multifamily apartment buildings, bed bugs can easily spread from one apartment to another through common walls, ceilings, via social activities, or through inappropriate pest control measures. It is very important to implement a building-wide management program in order to effectively eliminate bed bugs. Building-wide efforts start with education of the entire apartment community, including the management, staff, and residents. Community meetings and fact sheets are effective ways to raise awareness about bed bugs and provide fact-based information. During an early stage infestation, only a few apartments in a building may be infested. Under these situations, the adjoining units in all directions of each infested unit should be inspected. Follow-up inspections of adjoining units should continue on a bi-weekly to monthly basis until the infestation in the primary unit is eliminated. When greater than 10% of the units in a building become infested, it is best to conduct a building-wide survey of all units at least once per year using a combination of interview, visual inspection, and monitors. Every infested unit that is identified needs to be treated, monitored on a bi-weekly schedule, and retreated as necessary at each visit until elimination is confirmed. When designing the treatments, discuss with the building managers the most cost-effective treatment strategies with the goal of eliminating all bed bug infestations in a building within a short period of time. Preventing the introduction of bed bugs into the facility is the key to long-term success. First, identify the insect and determine the infestation level using a combination of interview, visual inspection, and placing of bed bug monitors. Educate the clients on bed bug biology, prevention, and simple control methods, such as frequent laundering and getting rid of clutter. Encourage them to report infestations immediately when noticed. Use heat, vacuum, and mattress encasements to kill or remove most of the bed bugs. Apply appropriate insecticides to provide residual protection. Monitor the infestations and surrounding units every two weeks until no bed bugs are found for at least six weeks. Conduct building-wide monitoring in multi-dwelling buildings every six to 12 months if greater than 10% of the units in the building are infested. Remember that IPM is a team effort and the success of bed bug eradication will depend on the cooperation among pest management professionals, building staff, and occupants.